Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. You may have seen our tutorial on how to make a log cabin quilt from a jelly roll. We made this really nice quilt and we used one whole jelly roll. And I've been experimenting with some other log cabins we can make from jelly rolls. So this is one that I came up with. Still a, still a log cabin and it's got a star in the middle. Now these are not colors I would probably make into a quilt, although it's very interesting, but I always make a practice square to see if everything fits. So this is made from a jelly roll and we've got log cabin strips and a star in the middle. So let's take a nice pretty colored jelly roll and see how it turns out. I've got one of these strip sets all laid out here because we cut these here. I just asked them, please don't roll it up because I'm going to make a quilt out of it. So this is perfect because it's got about half lights and half darks. And that's what you need in a log cabin. You need lights and darks or at least two different colors. So we're going to pull out some fabrics for the star part of the patchwork here. So I'm going to use light for these areas, and then I'm going to use dark for the points and a mix of greens and browns in the middle. For the light background of the star, this would be really nice. And then I think I'll get a lighter one also. This would be really nice. So those will be the background of the stars. Now I need to pick some dark fabrics out for the points. And I think I will get some darks here for the points and for the middle of the block. This will give me a nice variety and it'll be really pretty and scrappy looking. To make the star block, we've got a patchwork, just a two by two patchwork in the middle. Then we've got some rectangles here. And all of these squares here around the outside, the corners and the middle, they're all two and a half inch squares. The background here is going to be two and a half by four and a half. Then we're going to do some points, but they are also going to be cut from two and a half inch squares. So let's start with the light. We need some two and a half inch squares and some two and a half by four and a half inch backgrounds. The first piece I'm going to cut is the background here. It's the two and a half by four and a half. And I've picked another fabric also. So I've got two different fabrics for that background in this block. The next piece I'm going to cut is the background here, and that's a two and a half inch square. Now these pieces here are also all going to be two and a half inches, so I'm going to cut them all at the same time. Now we need to cut out the logs. Those are the strips that are going to go around the block. And this one is eight and a half, ten and a half, ten and a half, twelve and a half, twelve and a half, 14 and a half, 14 and a half, 16 and a half. And we will have all of these measurements on the download for the pattern. We've got our logs cut to length here, and you can see we've got some lights and some darks. And that is what you need on a log cabin. You want half the block light and the other half of it dark. And then that'll help that secondary pattern come out when we put all the blocks together in the quilt. So these are going to go around the star block. Now it doesn't look much like a star block yet, but you can see these are going to be the points. These are going to be the backgrounds. So the next step is to take all of the point blocks and draw a line across the diagonal on the back side of each one. I like to use a pencil for this step. There are a lot of different marking tools, so you can use whatever you like. We're going to draw right down the diagonal, and then we are going to do this for all of these star points. I've got all of the backs of the blocks all marked with pencil, so I'm ready to get started sewing. The first step is to stitch along this line that we drew. You can't see it very well, I can see it, but we're going to stitch right along that diagonal and then we're going to open this up. So another technique I use to get this line straight is I draw on my sewing machine here, you can use a piece of tape if you'd rather, a straight line from the needle straight down and then I can keep this point right on that line as I sew and that keeps it really, really straight. 
sometimes I will just use the line and I won't even draw on the back of the patches. I'll just skip that step. I've got the points sewn onto the background of all four. So we need to take these over to the ironing board, iron this open and trim off the excess. To iron these pieces, I like to iron it flat briefly, then we're folding it over on the stitching line. So these corners here are going to meet those corners there. I like to iron it before I trim off this excess because I can tell if it's sewn correctly and it's nice and flat and this helps keep it from distorting. So I'm just going to give it a little steam. Then I'm going to open it up and I'm going to cut away till I have a quarter inch left. And I just do this with scissors because see how I cut it a little bit crooked there? It doesn't really matter because that's the seam allowance it's still stitched correctly. So we're gonna do that with all of these corners. Now we're gonna line up the patch on the far corner. We're gonna stitch along that line and open it up and then we'll have both points. So again, just stitch right along the diagonal. Now we're gonna take these over to the ironing board. Iron that open and trim off the excess just like we did on this half. It's starting to look a little bit like a star. Now I'm going to sew these four pieces together. So I like to keep them in order like this and sew down here and then keep it on the machine and sew the next one. And that helps me line everything up and make sure I don't get anything mixed up. So we're gonna just alternate the way the seams are going. That one's going that way. So we'll make this one go the other way. And now we just stitch this last seam here. We've got our seams lined up. The intersect, the uh, seam allowance in the back is going up. This one's going down and they're, they're nesting, so they're butted right up. So we'll get a nice match there. And I'm gonna press it to one side. Now I'm not gonna iron this. That's gonna be good enough pressing for me. Now we can sew the block together. So I'm gonna put these two, these two, these two, and then I'm gonna add the third row. So I'm just gonna put this on here and stitch it and leave it on the machine. Now for this seam here, we do want to make sure that this seam comes in right at this point right here. So you can pin it if you like. So I like to line it up and then peel it back and see if it's coming in right where that point is. And you can pin it or you can just hold it. Now we'll open these up. And now this row is going to go, it's going to go right here. So we can just place these on like this. And if you wanna keep them in place, you can just stick a pin there if you like. And we'll start up here and stitch our way down. Now our rows are sewn together and we just need to stitch this way. I'm probably not going to iron it right now. I'm just gonna finger press. So I'm gonna press these seams away from the middle. And then I'm gonna press these seams toward the middle. And these ones again, away. That is the natural way that they wanted to lay because there's extra thickness here. It really wants to lay that way. This one could go either way, so we just did it in so that it's opposite from these. Now all we have to do is stitch here. 
we do want to make sure our intersections are matched again. So I'm going to stitch a little and then you can snip these open. The reason I leave it stitched is so I don't get a row on upside down, but you can snip it open if you like. That way you can look and see if those seams are lined up. I can usually feel with my finger here if they are, but if you want to move it back and check, it's always a good idea. Now we're going to sew the second seam here. We're going to make sure everything's lined up. Now we'll open it up and make sure everything's matched up. Looks really good. So I like to finger press it here again. Same thing on this side. Now we can see our star. So I'm going to take it over to the ironing board and give it a steam pressing and then we'll just put the logs on and then the block will be done. I've got the star block ready to put the log cabin pieces around it. And I want you to notice I used two greens here and here and two browns here and here. You don't have to do that. You can just use a mix of prints. I just thought this particular color combination would look a little better balanced with greens and browns. Now here is how the strips are going to go around. On a log cabin we do light light and then dark, dark, and then we've got another light and another dark. And my pieces are already cut to size, so they're going to fit on there perfectly once I get all the seam allowances and all the seams sewn. Okay, so I'm just going to pick the pieces back up in the same order that I laid them down. And now we'll just start on one side and go around as we sew. So line up the log with the corner there. I like to put a couple stitches in because it holds it in place and then I'm going to line it up on this end and I'm going to make sure that everything is lined up here so you can probably see me moving it with the palm of my hand here. And use a quarter inch and then every piece will fit on exact. So I don't iron it now, I'm just going to finger press a little bit and then I'm going to put the next piece on so you can see it's going to fit just exact. Now I'm going to press all the seam allowances from the logs out away from the center. So keep adding your strips all the way around the block and press all your seam allowances away from the center. All right, that's the whole block. They're so easy to make. I love having the star in the log cabin. Now all I have to do is cut the rest of the blocks and get them stitched up and then I can get the quilt onto the long arm. Can't wait to see what it looks like. Here's the whole finished quilt. You can see the block right here. So this is the one block. It's log cabin with the star in the middle. So I made six of those blocks and then by turning them different directions you get the light section, the dark section, the light section. So that's one option for turning the blocks and putting the log cabin together. The blocks sewed up really, really quick. It's a nice, fun, fast project. So I used one strip set or jelly roll and then I took some of the scraps and I made this pinwheel border. Now, if you're interested in knowing how to make the border, watch part two of this video and we'll show you how to piece these and get those all into a border. The finished quilt, it's about 41 by 57 inches. So it's a nice throw size. And I just want to wrap up in this and watch some TV or put the fireplace on. It looks really cozy. Thanks for watching our tutorial today and happy quilting. Oh,